This video reviews the composite topography capture. There are two types of corneal topography that you can collect. A single topography would be this icon here, and that's one single image capture of the eye. Whereas the composite capture will merge various fixations together to create a larger view of the eye. A single topography capture is useful when you need a simple screening of what is the general eye shape. Is it regular? Is it irregular? Is it normal? Is it diseased? But a composite topography is very useful when you're building a specialty contact lens, such as a orthokeratology lens, or pretty much any corneal GP or scleral lens. So related to the contact lens software especially, the composite topography is really valuable to you. When we start the test, it's going to give us instructions on where we want the patient to fixate. As an example, we can look down in the bottom left and we see the flower with the five different circles. The first that we're going to capture is highlighted in yellow. It's going to ask us to align the patient eye to the target. The patient will simply look right down the axis of the instrument on the center ring and we're going to do a normal capture as if we were taking a single capture. Let's start by asking our patient to open up as wide as they can, and then we'll move in slowly and steady until we get a 90% or better capture. And here we can see 90, 93, 94, the highest being 96. Make sure that you zoom in, ensure that the rings look parallel and even. If so, then you can use the buttons, either the circle button in the center to select it, or the square zoom button just to the left. In this case, we're happy with the image, so we can select the center circle button. Now, the software is gonna say, ask the patient to look up approximately four rings. So your patient will count four rings from the center and fixate on that fourth ring up. If the lower lid is in the way, you can ask the patient to pull down on their cheek. In this case, we're able to stretch the rings down to the inferior cornea. We'll ask our patient to blink and then move in. Steady over center. And we have a 91, 92, 94, 96%. Again, we can hold down the square key to make sure the rings look parallel and even, that we didn't have any tear film breakup. If we weren't happy with the images, we can select the diamond to clear these images out and start again. But since we're happy, let's click select. Next, the software will say, ask your patient to look down approximately four rings. And here, we may need to ask the patient to open up as wide as they possibly can, try to expose that superior cornea so we can get the rings to 12 o'clock and our patient has done a good job of opening up as wide as possible. We were able to get a 95% with the rings reaching the superior cornea. We can zoom in, ensure those central rings look parallel and even. If so, we can click select. Now, it, this is the trickier of captures because with the patient looking down, that could mean the upper lid is in the way. And if that's the case, then have the patient reach above the instrument and pull up on their eyebrow. In this case, we were able to simply expose the superior cornea by asking the patient open up as wide as they possibly could. Let's click select. The software is now asking us to have the patient look left for rings. And again, we'll do a simple capture fixating the green crosshair on the central ring and aligning the red distance indicator. We'll ask our patient open up wide and take a blink. Make sure the tear film is smooth. And once we're happy with that capture, again, we'll zoom in and we see beautifully parallel and even rings. We'll click select and the software will ask for the final capture. Ask the patient to look right approximately four rings. We'll center the unit, asking the patient to blink and open up wide. Now we have our 94% capture. Let's confirm that we have 
a acceptable ring reflection. That's looking really good. We can click select. Next, the software is going to analyze each and ensure that it has a pupil. The pupil is used to merge all of the captures together. So we can click the right arrow to go through each one of these images to ensure that we're happy with the capture. When it's finished, we can again click the right arrow and that will calculate the final composite image. This composite capture has now merged all of those five images into one, creating this view of the entire corneal surface from limbus to limbus. Now, if we were fitting a large diameter corneal GP or scleral lens, that peripheral data is going to be very important in the accurate construction of the initial lens, especially if we're using the Medmont contact lens software. So this composite function is a incredibly valuable tool to you when you're trying to understand not just the central cornea and the mid peripheral cornea, but the very peripheral cornea close to the limbus. It's valuable when you're trying to construct an initial specialty contact lens, like a large diameter ortho K lens or a scleral. So use this function whenever you're about to design a specialty lens for a patient.